It's the Tuesday of US Open Week, and I am joined once again by Justin Parsons at the Butch Harmon School of Golf to talk all things the 113th US Open Championship at Merion Golf Club, one of America's classic courses in Pennsylvania. So, JP, we all know the US Open is renowned as the most stringent and challenging test in golf. What makes the US Open set up traditionally so tough for the players, and, and what kind of player does a US Open typically favor? Well, traditionally, of course, the, you've got a scenario where the rough's up, rough's long, fairways are narrow, uh, very, very penal, therefore, for any tee shots that are straying offline. We do have a scenario uh, this year where the golf course is a little bit shorter than some of the courses that they've played in the, in the recent past. But combine that with uh, extremely difficult conditions around the greens, very, very fast, the pressures of a major championship, all of those things being considered, it really does add up to the US Open being one of the, the biggest tests on the golfing calendar. Okay, well, at US Open, where par is generally considered a, 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 the, the kind of score, winning score that the USGA try and set the golf course up, returns to Merion this year for the first time in an absence since 1981, a long time. Most of these players, JP, will not have actually played Merion before. I think only 14 players in the field have done so. So it's a bit of an unknown quantity. As you mentioned, it's a shorter course than usual. Under 7,000 yards for the first time since Shinnecock Hills in 2004, but it is a par 70. And the thing about Merion is the mix of holes is what's interesting here. You've got some very long holes. The, far, the par, five, a par 4 closing hole, the 18th, is 521 yards. You've got a par 5 in excess of 600 yards and quite a few of the par 3s above 230, but a lot of short holes in that middle stretch. So how is that going to present? I mean, what, what kind of course do you see Merriam being as a US Open setup? Well, you've got to think that the, the eventual champion is somebody who can really manage their game. They're going to have a very wide variety of shots. They're going to have to be able to dig in and conquer those extremely long and, and challenging, demanding holes. And they're going to have to have a strategy employed to be able to cope with the, the shorter, narrower holes. I believe there are some dog legs out there um, where you've got to really get your angles right. I listened to Rory talking about 14 and 18 that he felt were two of the most tough, long, demanding par fours that he'd played all year. So, you know, you're, you're into a scenario where a, an experienced, well-rounded player, uh, I would say, is going to be the eventual champion this week. Yeah, I mean, if you look at the uh, past winners at Merion, you've got some real uh, authentic ball strikers, some of the best of all time. Ben Hogan won in 19, uh, 1950, I believe. Lee Trevino won in 1971. And more recently, David Graham, the last time the US Open was held there. But really some, some quality ball strikers. And I suppose that's, if you were to look at a potential winner this week, you'd have to look at someone who really does control the golf ball very well. I think so. I mean, there have been some interesting pictures put up on social media and stuff guys dropping some balls in the rough and you can't see much of them. So, you know, you're gonna be thinking about a, a player who can keep the ball in play primarily with that type of strategy and that type of patience, potentially somebody who's been, you know, in those sort of scenarios before, you know, as Robbie's saying, a, a good ball striker um, and of course somebody with a, with a very adequate short game. So it's gonna be a great test and I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, well, we're gonna talk about a few of the favorites this week at Merion. Obviously someone who can manage their game better than most is, is the man that many expect to see claim a, a, a 15th major title. It's been five years almost to the day since he last won a major at Torrey Pines in 2008. And Tiger Woods heads to Merion on the back of four victories. The last, a very impressive performance, JP, at Sawgrass, where he won only his second Players' Championship. He heads there as the overwhelming favorite this week. And really, when you look at Tiger and, and a course where he can leave the driver in the bag you know he can use that club sparingly it's a shorter course under 7,000 yards the forecast is for wet conditions which will obviously favor the longer hitters it it really does look like it's going to play into his hands Marion well you've got to think that he's got a fighting chance and if we'd been having this conversation after his win at Sawgrass I would have th thought that he would be my favorite his play at Memorial was very untiger like he seemed to get in his own way in a couple of short game scenarios. He took seven, I think, and a six from just off the edge of the green. He put up his biggest score for nine holes as a professional. He shot 44. So, you know, there are some troubles there for him. And interestingly, those troubles did occur around the green. They didn't occur with the driver, which, you know, would also give him that, you know, even greater fighting chance at Merion. So it'll be interesting to see, you know, how he's gonna cope with that type of preparation. You know, he's definitely got what it takes to, to put this one away. He can, he can play all of those drills 
shelling low types of shots off the tee. He's not going to have to hit driver on every hole. And if he can get his short game and his putting back to where we know it can be and where it has been, you know, we've got to look out for Tiger. Well, we saw recently he has 78 PGA Tour victories in 300 starts before the Memorial, of course. Uh, it's, it's an incredible statistic when you think about it. It's over a third of tournaments that he enters, uh, almost a third, sorry, that, that he ends up winning. So, you know, putting Tiger's chances into perspective here, uh, clearly the pressure that he feels in a major championship has certainly grown since in the, in the five years that, he's, that he last won one. We've seen very untiger-like performances on weekends in the majors, you know, critical mistakes at critical times. And how do you, do you think he's ready now to win a major? Is that something that he needs to, to validate this, this run of golf that he's been putting together? Or, or you know, he might say that, that continuing to win at the pace he has is, is good enough to, to silence his critics, but there are those out there who say, well, he's not really genuinely back until he's won a major. How much pressure does he feel, to, do you think, to resume that chase for, for Jack Nicklaus's 18 majors? You know, I've never been fortunate enough to spend too much time with Tiger, but I've spent a lot of time with people who have known him. And, you know, everybody pretty much levels the same type of analogies at him. It's always about the records. It's always about performances. It's always about victories. And I know that a person like that has got to be feeling some pressure when he hasn't had, he hasn't had a major championship for five years. His attention to detail, his preparation, everything he does is, is there to win these golf tournaments. So the longer it goes without doing something, the harder it's going to be for him to overcome that hurdle, just like any other sportsman. But, you know, his, his dedication and his diligence and his desire, uh, it can't be questioned. Okay, well, Tiger will play the first two rounds with world numbers two and three, Rory McIlroy and Adam Scott, two players you know pretty well, JP. Rory, of course, you're close to his coach, Michael Bannon, Adam Scott, a protege of, uh, of Butch Harmon. Adam, having got that major monkey off his back in, in, at Augusta and, and really has turned into a player that just performs so well on the biggest stages, it's very tough to win back-to-back -back majors, but how do you assess his chances? I think Scotty's probably got a pretty good chance uh, to do this. You know, he's unflappable in his ball striking. We've, you know, we've seen him clearly win the Masters in trying conditions at the end. He's done a lot of work uh, with the guys at the Titleist Performance Institute on his preparation. He's changed some things about his preparation that he feels is a key to his performance being elevated. And he's certainly one of those guys now who knows how to perform in major championships. So again, if you get a situation where he gets his putter going and he gets comfortable and gets into his groove, he's not the sort of guy that's going to put himself out of it with his ball striking. So you maybe look for Adam Scott to be there come the end of the week. Yeah, now usually you would expect Rory McIlroy to be, to be right there, but there are some serious reservations about his chances. He only won the US Open two years ago at Congressional at a setup that, albeit a lot longer, might play fairly similar because it was very damp and soggy conditions there. So ordinarily you'd say that the course could play into Rory's hands, but it's very hard when you look at his recent form to, to be optimistic about Rory's chances. You know, he was poor at Wentworth. He's missed a lot of cuts this year in the States. He just hasn't really got going yet. You know, we're still waiting for him just to explode into life as we know he can. Are there signs that that might happen? Well, yeah, I think when you delve um, a little deeper, and he was poor at Wentworth, but I looked at some of the PGA Tour statistics, and he's number five in ball striking. So you've got to think that Rory's getting back to a point where his, you know, his engines are starting to rev, and he's starting to hit the golf ball the way he needs to hit the golf ball. It's been clear that his, uh, his putting has been a weak link again, something that he and Dave Stockton had worked very, very hard on and, and really led him to those successes in the major championships that we, uh, that we witnessed. And I think you, know, you write Rory off at your peril, but he he is becoming you know, more and more enigmatic when it comes to knowing what he's going to do next. Would it surprise me if Rory won the US Open by eight shots? No, not really. But would it surprise me if he missed the cut? Not really. Yeah, it's a difficult one to, to really assess, but we'll have to wait and see how Rory performs. But looking at the other favorites, and there are quite a lot of contenders this year at a major that's generally not very unpredictable beast, US Opens, but Matt Kuchar is a name that stands out. He, of course, won the tournament at Memorial just a couple of weeks ago and really is uh, Second to Tiger, the form player of the season so far, obviously won the match play down in Arizona, and his putting just looks tremendous, JP, and we both know it's the putting that gets it done at US Opens, certainly more than a lot of other departments in the game. Matt Kuchar looks really strong. Yeah, I know we, we both like Matt Kuchar, and you know, he's got 
although on the face of it a rather ungainly golf swing, but a very, very efficient golf swing, very rotary, tall guy, gets the club on the ball in the right way each time. He's got a perfect game for the US Open, really controls his ball well off the tee, controls his ball well onto the greens and scores, as you say, with this wonderful putting touch, which he has with a, a legal, what's going to be a legal putting stroke. So well, indeed, yeah. we'll look out for him. Yeah, absolutely. There is a host of raft of other contenders. Obviously, Graham McDowell's been on good form. He won the uh, the match play in, uh, in Bulgaria not so long ago. And all sorts of other players who are in with a chance. Phil Mickelson did well at the St. Jude Classic, just uh, just a couple of nights ago. And what other names spring out to you? Um, we've got a lot of American players. Scott Stallings has had a very good season. Uh, you've got Brant Snedeker, who contended at the Masters. Jason Day, uh, a reliable performer in the majors. Loads of names. Who do you like? I'm going to say, I, I like as an outsider, Zach Johnson. Zach hits it very, very straight. It's pretty good form of late. Uh, excellent putter um, and a great mind, you know, a real determination. Having spoken to some of the guys, Zach works a lot at TPI. You know, Zach has an, an inner fight and a determination to do well in tournaments. So as an outsider, maybe Zach Johnson. Manacero has played unbelievable golf recently. We're looking for a breakout year from a European, a young European to come up behind Rory and start to get into those realms. So maybe Manacero will be another outsider for me. Quite incredible that at 20 years of age, Matteo Manassero has already won four European Tour titles, including the biggest to date at Wentworth, the PGA Championship, just a couple of weeks ago. And that performance bodes certainly well for Merian, being a similar setup and similar weather conditions. And Matteo Manassero is certainly one who could go very well this week. Looking at a favourite, I also like your pick, JP. I think Matt Kuchar is in irresistible form right now. He's got all the components in his game to do well at a US Open track. He's very reliable. He's a consistent ball striker, very straight hitter. And that putter is just on fire at the moment. So Matt would be my tip to win the US Open. Looking at some of the outsiders, perhaps darker horses tips, you've got Scott Stallings, who's been having a very strong PGA Tour season. He's already got five top 10 finishes, including a recent second place at the St. Jude Classic last week. And Bill Billy Horschel as well, who's also had some very strong finishes, some young American players that could be flying in under the radar, but could do very well at Merion. So that's up. That's it from myself and Justin here at the Butch Harmon School of Golf. The US Open will be televised on ESPN and Fox Sports at many of the golf clubs around the UAE. We hope you manage to catch what we hope will be a very exciting second installment of the 2013 major season.